Air Force Small Business Innovation Research, SBIR program, has supported the development of many mission-critical technologies, including this one for the Air Force's Arnold Engineering Development Complex, AEDC. A rocket plume is kind of a, a fingerprint. It's a fingerprint to individual missiles that are launched throughout the world, and each one is unique. The government uses that information to design missile defense systems to protect our country. When an aircraft flies around, uh, it's got a sensor on board that can detect threats. So in order to test those sensors, you have to have good models that you can use to produce what we'll call synthetic scenes that you present to those developmental sensors and see how they respond before you put it on an aircraft and fly it around with actual threats. With the support of the Air Force SBIR program, Propulsion Science and Technology developed two technologies that vastly improve warning sensors. The first was a way to merge plume models with actual measurements, and the second was an advanced image processing system to more more accurately portray plumes in flight. Modeling a plume starts with gathering the information um, for the rocket system itself, the ingredients of the propellant, the shape of the motor, the shape of the body of the missile. Those are input into a very specialized code that is used to calculate what comes out of the exhaust of the rocket. Through SBIR funding, PST created the ModX Toolkit. The software that we're developing takes measurements that are taken by the Air Force and merges them with the simulations that we can produce through the various models that we've developed and combine them together to get the best of both worlds, so to speak. We have the accuracy and the reality of the measurement, and then we also have the flexibility of the models and simulations. And then you can use the trends from the model to say, well, what's it going to look like at this other condition where the data hasn't been measured? Before the toolkit existed, all of that was done by specialists. The ModX toolkit allows AEDC to do that whole task for probably about a tenth of the cost and about a tenth of the time. The second project that we have is called the Image Morphing Tool. The Image Morphing Toolkit that we've developed is a direct result of SBIR funding. The purpose is to create a smooth interpolation for images in those models that come out of the Model Extrapolation Toolkit. The models normally have an image at certain conditions. And so if you just take the nearest neighbor, there's always going to be a little bit of a a jumping from one image to the next because there's no smooth interpolation for the imagery. The morphing toolkit allows you to smoothly create an image at any intermediate condition and that allows you to avoid that jitter effect. So the technology is actually based on commercial ideas that have come from the world of entertainment. This idea of morphing where you've seen you know, horses change into camels or, or people change into animals is actually a morphing technique and its underlying mathematics are actually well suited to interpolation of images. Sensors seeing something in real time moving fluidly. So the goal of the final product is to create a missile plume uh, representation that is as close to reality as possible. That created the ability to actually use less images, reduce the file size, be able to access it faster. To move through the images faster is what allows you to get to the real-time simulation, which is the most critical part of testing early warning sensors. So we're looking at other commercial applications in the medical field where there's a lot of imagery available, CAT scans, MRIs, ultrasounds. We're trying to now explore whether there's some utility to what we're doing to, to that kind of um, audience. For example, the PST technology might help technicians compare MRIs across time if the images were taken from slightly different angles between one year and another. The SBIR has been monumental in allowing us to take the concept and bring it to a reality. For many of these companies, it means the difference between uh, their very survival, that if they don't get the funding that we promised in a timely fashion, uh, they may not survive to be able to provide that technology the, the following year. Uh, so it is a very uh, symbiotic relationship. So SBIR does allow small businesses to stay viable, maintain the intellectual property, um, that the government has spent a lot of money on. It allows small businesses to support programs that are going to come out in the future. 
Propulsion Science and Technology's Missile Plume Database and Imagery are perfect examples of how the Small Business Innovation Research Program helps the Defense Department meet its better buying power goals of controlling costs while getting effective new technologies into the hands of U.S. warfighters.